Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, somebody sent me this, uh, some thoughts on the elections. But before I read that, let me read to you the definition of an antichrist. Now, this is the Bible definition of an antichrist. 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. So if you deny the Son... If you not deny Jesus Christ the Son, you don't have the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. So if you don't have the Father, I mean, if you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father either. Now, there's only one group of people in this world that I'm aware of that actually deny that Jesus is the Christ or the Messiah. There's millions of them over in the Middle East. And no, they're not Arabs if you catch my drift. So, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 16, 22, If any man love not, if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, which is cursed. So if you don't love the Lord Jesus, you're cursed. Let him be cursed. Oh, maybe that's why uh, a certain group of people uh, hate Paul. What do you think? All right, well, with that in mind, just remember who's Trump's family is all married to. Do they fit the definition of an antichrist? Hmm. I don't know. You tell me. But with that in mind, let's read this little um, comment. Now, personally, I'm an independent, and honestly, I... I I look at it this way. God sets up kings. God deposes kings. And, uh, you know, anything that happens, God allows. That doesn't mean he approves, but he allows it. He allowed uh, a lot of things to happen in the Bible. He allowed the Assyrians to take Israel into captivity, allowed uh, Jerusalem to be destroyed by the Babylonians, and uh, allowed Jerusalem to be destroyed by the Romans at a later date. So, all right, let me read you the comment by somebody, and I'm quoting. Quote, Many people are saying the election is over and wanting to know what I think since I told them Trump was going to win. I told them all the same thing. I'll believe Trump has lost when I see him leave the office and Biden takes over. Until then, I still believe firmly, think that he will find a way to win. Now, this is just my belief based on everything I know and have seen up till now. Uh, everything is going exactly how I thought it would. A close race with debates of fraud, accusations of all sorts, lawsuits, etc., etc., etc. Eventually, Trump will win, which will fuel all sorts of riots and such. I think the J, and then take a W and O, um, you know, take those three letters and figure out what that means. Um, I think the J and the W O has played the election exactly how they wanted. The left is voting for pure evil. Uh, let me put Bob's comment here real quick. A lot of people don't know it, but, uh, you know, by, if, if Biden did get in, and I'm not saying he would, I'm just, you know, hypothetically, uh, if he dies in office, Camilla Harris would become president, right? 
there was a journalist that exposed that the um, Planned Parenthood was selling aborted body parts, which is against federal law, by the way. I mean, they do it, but, you know, they're not supposed to. But uh, he exposed that they were doing it, did an expose on it. So what did Camilla do? Did she go after the Planned Parenthood that was breaking federal law? No. She went after the journalist that exposed them breaking the law and uh, charged him with all kinds of felonies. Uh, this is the kind of person that could possibly become president. She claims to be black. Um, I looked at her family picture. They look pretty white to me. But then again, they're probably part of the J and the W.O. Oh, of course they are, but I mean, you know, they're probably J's. But um, she uh, she's for abortion, she's for gun control, and every time that there's ever been gun control in a country, genocide always follows might take 20, 30, 40, 50 years, but any time there's been gun control, there's been genocide. That's why when I hear people say, oh, you know, well, I, I hate guns. Hey, no problem. Stalin, uh, who killed probably between 60 and 85 million people, some say as many as 110 million, uh, he loved gun control, too. He was a communist, by the way. Um, he killed more people than Hitler ever thought about. The only other person in modern history that ever killed more people than Stalin was Mao. Mao killed well over 100 million people. If you were a business owner, a policeman, a military, a politician for the previous uh, government, uh, if you were college educated, you were, you, they killed you. That was it. All they wanted was uh, the, the rice farmers and the, uh, the politicians, the communist politicians. Everybody else was a peasant. But uh, when you uh, agree that gun control is good and you wouldn't want to have a gun, well, when your theology from the Bible lines up with the communists, you ought to rethink your Bible theology. I mean, really, you should. You know, uh, if I saw somebody raping an, my eight-year-old uh, neighbor's daughter, um, I'm not going to stand there and watch him and say, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and hand him a condom. I'm sorry. I'm going to do something a little bit more drastic. I'm going to go send them to be with their father, the devil. So, what can I tell you? But that's just Chaplain Bob's thoughts, you know. You know, uh, these people that claim to love Jesus, that, you know, think that guns should be banned, you know, uh, what? what? Uh, you know, King David, when he faced Goliath, should have said, Jesus loves you, Goliath. I'm not going to hurt you because I love you too. Meanwhile, Goliath takes his sword and cuts off David's head and holds it up. And all the Philistines would be cheering, right? Yeah. Now, that's, that's, modern, that's modern theology for you. No. So. All right. So, the left. Uh, let me continue reading his thing. Quote. The left is voting for pure evil, and the right is voting for a J-loving, liberal, non-Christian. I say he's an antichrist, but that's just okay. Uh, and the right is voting for a J-loving, liberal, non-Christian by their own free will, while the J and the WO agenda marches forward at an alarming rate. The J and the WO wins at every turn. I still say the best thing that could happen in this country is for an extreme liberal to get in office and come after the churches and the guns. 
But of course, this would wake up the Christian right and the J and the uh, W.O.'s uh, has them sleeping away. Why wake the sleeping bear? What are your thoughts? Unquote. I think this comment nails it. But hey, what can I tell you? So, uh, yeah. All I know is you get uh, some two-legged animals that want to kill you because you're white. Um, personally, I think every Christian should, you know, Jesus said, buy a sword. And I think they should. Some, some animal, two-legged animal wants to kill you because you're white. Well, you should protect your family. Matter of fact, the Bible says that, uh, well, let's, let's, let's look it up. All right. Um, in the book of Luke, when Jesus was in the garden, he told the disciples to, uh, if they had no sword, to take their cloak and buy one. Sell your cloak and buy one. Obviously, we don't live by the sword. No, and we're not to murder people. But 1 Timothy 5, 8 says, But if any provide not for his own, and especially of those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Provide what? Well, food, shelter, clothing, and protection, right? I mean, seriously. I've actually, you know... Your eight-year-old daughter, you're gonna sit there and watch somebody rape them and then murder them? Really? You're gonna, you're gonna, oh, oh, it's it's wrong for me to own a gun and to kill somebody. Jesus wouldn't want that. Uh, I tell you what, the Bible plainly tells you that if a thief was caught breaking into the house at night and you killed him, you were guiltless. There'd be no bloodshed for them. Zero. Why is that? Were they, well, you know, somebody's in your house at night when everybody's sleeping. Uh, what are you going to hand them? A job application and say, are you here to rape my eight-year-old daughter? Or are you here to rob us? Or are you here to murder somebody? Whoa. You know, can you can you give me three references and, and come back later? You know, I don't think so. They're to be treated as a murderer, and you're allowed to protect your family. So, I don't know. But that's just my thing. And if you uh, own a gun and you kill somebody that's trying to hurt your family, you know what? You tell the Lord Chaplain Bob said it, I'll take full responsibility. And I'll show the Lord where it is in his scriptures. And I have a feeling the Lord will say, Well done, thou faithful servant. Because I tell you what, somebody rapes, try to rape an eight-year-old kid, I kill them. And that's why they want gun control in this country. That's exactly why. Because, uh, you know, when they had that thing talking about the pizza, oh yeah. And then the, uh, the gate, yeah. Yeah, that's why. All right, so I'm done ranting and raving. But uh, seriously, I, I think that's what's going to happen. Uh, this commenter is probably right. You know, all the churchgoers will think, oh, Trump won. Oh, we're so lucky. And then uh, we'll have riots, and then the riots will get out of control, and then Trump will uh, call in the United Nations troops, which are probably already here, consisting of Chinese. And then, uh, you know, well, you know, uh, we can't have all these guns running, running around. People are getting hurt. So we're going to collect the guns, and, and we'll give them back to you later after everything calms down. Yeah. Yeah. And then he'll call in the United Nations troops, which the Chinese will have no problem shooting Americans. 
you know, maybe uh, National Guard troops wouldn't want to shoot American citizens for refusing to turn in their guns. But uh, by God, the Chinese won't have a problem. Uh-uh. And being that the, the Chinese have, uh, you know, they they can field an army. They could field an army of uh, 30, 40, 50 million troops easily. They have 1.5 billion people living there. For those of you that don't know what a billion is, that's a 1,000 millions. So they have 1,500 million people living in that country. And you, you think uh, they couldn't field 50 million people for an army? And uh, I've dro I drove a truck for, oh, I don't know, five years. And I, I was making deliveries to national parks. And I noticed that uh, certain parts of the national parks were closed. Oh, wait a minute. This was like back in the 90s. Oh, but wait, because of this uh, co um, and idiot thing, um, do you know that all the national parks are closed? How would you know if they were not full of foreign troops? How would you know? But I saw foreign troops with uh, all kinds of equipment, rocket launchers, artillery, tanks, uh, armored personnel carriers. I was in the Army. I know what the stuff looks like. I know what our stuff looks like, and I know what the foreign stuff... Well, I know the foreign stuff doesn't look like ours. I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert on what Russian and Chinese and German equipment looks like, but I know what American equipment used to look like. And uh, I saw stuff in national parks. I made deliveries. I made deliveries to... Uh, when Clinton was president, right, um, he said he was closing a bunch of military bases. We didn't need them anymore. Well, I made deliveries to closed military bases, and they were putting barbed wire, inward-facing barbed wire up, and turn, uh, metal turnstiles. Um, what do they call those? I forget. It's like a, re a a revolving door. You ever go to a, you know, um, like in a uh, like in a mall or something? They got a, the revolving doors. Everybody walks in a circle. Well, they have those, but with metal turnstiles. They're 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 metal, and uh, they you know they lock them. You can't get out. And uh, I mean, I was not even allowed to get out of the truck. They had to. Um, they had to open the truck. I had to back up to the dock. wasn't allowed out of the truck to see what was in the truck. I wasn't. Uh, the um, bill of lading didn't have just said truckload on it. I didn't know what was inside the the trailer. Uh, you know. Matter of fact, I went to that. Uh, there was a cave in a huge cavern. Huge. Um, in Kansas City, where you could drive a tractor trailer in there for over a mile, and you could turn a tractor trailer around. I mean, it was like huge. And I was talking to one of the guards, and he was telling me a little bit about the history of the place. He said, Yeah, they built this place in World War II, and they've been expanding it ever since. Thing was absolutely huge. I wasn't allowed out of the truck for that either. Um, truck driver you know pull up to the the gate or whatever and then they let you in and then they uh you follow a golf cart and then they tell you where to go and uh they open the doors and then you just back up to the dock or whatever and then they unload it and then they escort you out you were escorted in and out you know they didn't allow you to uh walk around or get out of the truck or whatever um, you know, I've been to places like this, but those military places that were supposedly closed, they were remodeling them. I guess you could say remodeling. Haha, <laughs> yeah. They were, uh, I don't know what they were doing. 
but it looks like they were turning them, turning them into prisons. But, uh, you know, they've been planning this stuff for a long, long time. But uh, people were waking up, you know, uh, from because of the Internet. And I guess they felt like um, they had to do something soon because people were starting to figure out what's going on. I mean, it's probably only 5%. But uh, when I go to videos, I, I tell you, I, I read the comments. And I'm surprised how many people are starting to wake up. Uh, 30 years ago, 25 years ago, hardly anybody. People thought I was crazy. They don't think I'm crazy anymore. Um, so... And, oh, by the way, there's a group called the um, J, and then uh, the I, and then the D, and then the F. Uh, you know what the J word is. And then the, um, and then it's the um, Internet Defense Force. And what it is, it's a group over in the, Middle East, not Arab, and um, they're, uh, they've actually got a website, and their whole job is to go on social media sites and defend the you-know-whos, and of course, uh, they, every time you go to a Christian site, you'll always find some people that claim to be atheists and how stupid Christians are because, you know, we all evolved, you know, evolution's true, so we're just a bunch of idiots. But you know what? I went to a, the J websites where the Rab I is uh, speaking to his sin of Gog, and um, you never see you never see atheists telling them that they're stupid. No, they only come to Christian sites, and then they tell you, you know, the Bible's mistranslated. The King James is wrong, and uh, you know, just stuff like that. Or if you get some news that the uh, uh, things that uh, the evil ones are doing. Uh, of course, they'll deny it, but that's their whole purpose with their uh, that little group is to spread lies and disinformation. Yeah, read John eight forty four, Father of Lies. And if you don't know who Jesus is speaking to, read down, and it says, uh, "Then answer the you know who's." But I'm at the point where uh, I don't really, I'm at the point I don't even care anymore if, uh, you know, if they take the channel down, they take the channel down. God's in control. Um, I'm so sick. You know, everybody says, oh yeah, go to this uh, new uh, website or go to this one or that one. It's like, I, I look up the, who owns these people one was owned by a Muslim, another's owned by a you-know-who, another one's owned by Google, uh, and I'm not talking about YouTube. And then, you know, Bright Eon, they were supposed to, oh, we're, we're not going to have any censorship. Yeah, and then they deleted 242 of my videos in one day. Yeah, they said for lack of views. And then a month later, they write, and say, oh, you, uh, you've you got uh, over something like 20,000 views. You can, you can upload all the videos you want. So in one month, they went from deleting 242 videos to I, now I can load them back on? No. No, it, it's garbage. It's just unbelievable. Now, they own it all. They own all the Internet. So, you know, it took me three to four months to load all those videos on Bright Eon. I mean, I was spending 
hours every single day loading videos, writing descriptions, writing uh, keywords. I mean, unbelievable amount of time that I spent. And then in one day, 242 videos, gone, boom. You know, it, I feel like I'm wasting my time. But that's why I've been, uh, you know, telling everybody, send me an SD card, send me a USB drive. Um, I'll be happy to give you my work. And hey, if you want to load it to something, you know, you find a website, you want to load the, the audio or video to, go for it. Oh, Sermon Audio. Do you know that Sermon Audio kicked me off? I think I I think it was Sermon Audio. Yeah, I think I think it was Sermon Audio. I was paying them, paying them to host my audio Bible studies, and they said I'm not a good fit, and they kicked me off, and then they deleted my channel. Yeah, a Christian website, right? That I was paying for. You're gonna tell me they don't control it all? Yeah, the words of Jesus are anti, uh, you know who, itic, uh, sem, and then itic. Yeah, Jesus, he's really evil. That guy, you know, all those terrible things he said to the you know who's. Yeah, that's what they, that's what they, that's what they claim. Anyway, so. All right. Well, I'm just you know kind of fed up with everything really and I'm kind of shocked that I'm still on YouTube but uh, like I say get me an SD card get me a USB drive I'll make copies send it to you no problem because there's gonna be a day it's gone and uh, when it is I mean, it, it's, there's laws, listen people, there's laws on the books right now where they can make the New Testament illegal. No more Jesus. It's on the books. They're just not enforcing it right now. And all these churchgoers that think, oh, we gotta, we just love our Donald. Yeah, you love you love Donald. Look at who his family's married to. They don't love Jesus. So, what can I tell you? It's just, it's unbelievable. They actually think he's going to make America great again. No, Jesus made America great. But we turned our back on him, and now he has turned his back on us. Now is... Uh, coming judgment it's probably been four generations three or four generations of nothing but wickedness in this country at least in the early 60s america was still somewhat godly and respectable in some ways but by the late 60s sex drugs rock and roll people i mean i was a real young kid in the 60s but I remember I remember I was a basically a early 70s kid at the tail end of the hippie generation I saw what this country went from the early 60s to the early 70s and then in the 70s was uh, cocaine and then 80s 90s uh, and then look at what we are today. Honestly, didn't think I'd live to be this old. I really didn't. All the drugs I did, I honestly didn't think I'd live this long. OD'd a couple times. Uh, at least twice that I can remember. Yeah, not proud of it. You know, uh, I know people that go to Narcotics Anonymous and Sounds like a, a lot of our bragging. Oh, yeah, I could do this and I could do that. I, I'm not bragging. I, I just, you know, I'm pleased that the Lord pulled out his hand and pulled me out of the pigsty. I'm really, really pleased. 
But uh, this country, the cup of the uh, cup of the sin is overflowing, and uh, all these people think Trump's going to be their savior. Well, they're going to find out how just how wrong they were. But I suspect that's why all the national parks are closed right now, not because of a virus, no. I think they're holding troops, I really do. And when the riots happen, yeah, you're going to be shocked at how quick, in force, they're here. And they're going to show no pity at all, zero I was writing a book, but the um, thing is, uh, I couldn't do Bible studies and write the book. It was like one or the other. But uh, I just haven't felt compelled, just haven't felt inspired to do any Bible studies. So, just thought I'd let you know. I'm, uh, heart is really heavy looking at what this country is. So, I don't have much family left. They're almost all dead. So, what can I tell you? But, one good thing, persecution will bring a revival of the remnant church. It will. It's going to be a small. It'll be small. You know, when the... Uh, TV preachers and the rabbis start telling you that the Messiah has come. And the Bible warns you the false Messiah comes first. The Bible warns you over and over and over. But when they say the Messiah has come, look out. When they say peace and safety, look out. The Bible says sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. I might be paraphrasing that, but you get the idea. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting time. Just remember something. God is in control. God picked us to live where we live and in this time period for a reason. And the Lord promises that he will not allow us to suffer more than we are able to bear. And if it is our lot to die for the faith, not to think about what you're going to say, because the Holy Spirit will speak through you, and that will be your proof that you are one of the shepherd's sheep. So, all right, all blessings, praise. Glory and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.